Bernie Sanders is going to have to decide whether he's going to continue with his anti-establishment class-based politics mm. or whether and therefore sharpen his attacks on Biden <coughs> and his past record on all the kind of things that we talked about there in your package or he's going to have to maybe make some compromises with the kind of politics that has won for Biden or the, among the voters who've won for Biden Super Tuesday that is among college educated women and it's on the question of identity that uh, Biden really won uh, the, uh, the two days ago and I think that therefore Bernie Sanders has got to decide what he's going to do. Well, if you listen to his speech yesterday, it wasn't really a concession speech, yeah. it was just a speech after Super Tuesday, yeah. um, that magnanimous mm. side of him actually isn't showing up. Mm. And if anything, he is going down really hard on Joe Biden, bringing up multiple issues mm. from the past. We heard the one about um, uh, him looking to cut Social Security costs um, and various other measures from, uh, that he brought up from mm. the past as well. What does that eventually mean once mm. the nomination is secured mm. because if he's creating this much divisiveness from mm. now and, and no doubt Biden mm. is going to respond to Sanders as well uh, how can you bring both mm. sides of the Democrat Party together mm. when it's time for the election against President President Trump I think it's going to be quite tough on the one side you've got people who want to defeat uh, Donald Trump at any cost but the key thing here I think is that there's the kind of struggle between normalcy and electricity Normalcy is Joe Biden, and he's promising business as usual, back to normal. Trump is the problem. And for a lot of people, that's enough. They dislike Trump intensely. But for a large number of other people who turn out to vote, they look forward to the future, not to a past which Biden is steeped in. Mm -hmm. And their view is, we've got big debts from college. We've got no chance of owning our own home. Our jobs are not paying anything much as they used to. Uh, we are working in an economy which is more precarious for us than it used to be. What, what is Biden going to do for us? And when Sanders sharpens his attacks on Biden's past about incarceration of African Americans and so on, Iraq war, 2008 bailouts and so on, I think a lot of those may well stay at home, mm -hmm. which is what happened with Hillary Clinton in 2016 too. On that note, if Biden gets the nomination, we'll ultimately end up with the radical versus establishment in the general election in November. How is that different to what we saw in 2016, and why should we expect the vote to turn out differently? Well, the difference with 2016 is that President Trump could say he wasn't part of anything in politics or in government. He was a radical outsider. He's not a radical outsider anymore. He's been in power for four years. So he's now responsible for a large part of what has been going on. So he has a record to defend, which he'll defend to, to the death. But on the other hand, he has violated the Constitution. He has uh, diverted Pentagon spending to the border wall. He has upset large numbers of American allies. Uh, the level of uh, geopolitical tension in the world in different hotspots has increased. And so he's got that to answer to. The problem is that Joe Biden is saying, everything was fine till you came. It wasn't. Mm. President Trump is a reflection and a response of a deep-seated shift in American power in the world, mm. which really began with Obama and the uh, pivot to Asia. Mm. And in a way, his style is different, but he has carried on much of that kind of an agenda. Hi, I'm Giovanna Bersecchi, and thank you for watching. You can check out more of our videos by clicking on the boxes on the screen. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more from CNBC International. Thank you for watching.